And our first order of business will be for Mr. Holbrook to lead us in our invocation and our pledge. Let us stand, please. Press the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity of life. We thank you for giving us the privilege of serving our community. We pray that our decisions will be thought through, that you will help direct our paths, give us the insight, the wisdom, the courage to do what's right and what's proper. You can provide that through your touch that none of us can comply individually. So we ask for your help and your assistance as we go through these difficult weeks ahead, making difficult decisions. And we always remember that you are going to do what's best for our people and what's best for this county. We thank you again for what you've blessed us with, which has been so many things in the last year. Thank you for all of that. Be with us as we go forward. Everyone here tonight, all commissioners are here, and at this time we have to get elected officials. Okay. And I'm thanking all the veterans that are still standing here, so three vet veterans, three families.
budget amendment in the health department. We're asking you to accept $9,600 in Carolina Community Care Fund to be funds to be used for the operational expenses of the Carolina Access Program. And item F is a resolution honoring Dr. Ted Westmoreland upon his retirement and the purpose of care to read that for you, Mr. Chairman. This resolution is an appreciation of contributions to Cleveland County, Dr. Theodore G. Ted Westmoreland. Whereas Dr. Westmoreland will be retiring after 52 years in the practice of veterinary medicine, and whereas his dedicated service to the community deserves special recognition, and whereas as owner of Boulevard Animal Hospital, PA, one of the most successful animal clinics in the state of North Carolina, Dr. Westmoreland has provided loving treatment to tens of thousands of dogs, cats, and many other animals in our community while serving their owners with care and respect and providing wise counsel. And whereas Dr. Westmoreland developed a prominent purebred Angus farm whose cattle excelled at the local, state, regional, and interna international levels, making a genetic impact on offspring in 44 states and Argentina. And whereas Dr. Westmoreland has faithfully served as an active member of Elizabeth Baptist Church for five decades, having served in many leadership positions. And whereas Dr. Westmoreland had served as a mentor to numerous students who are now successful veterinarians and taught them values for which he is so well known, a strong work ethic and a lifelong desire for learning. And whereas the, the vast array of philanthropies that Dr. Westmoreland is involved in shows how he gives unselfishly his time, money, and talent to benefit others. Now therefore, we the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners hereby express our sincere appreciation and deep gratitude for the dedication and distinguished service of Dr. Ted Westmoreland. Adopted this the fourth day of June, 2013. It'll be presented to him at his retirement this weekend. Thank you. Uh, Commissioners, you've heard uh, County Manager and Carrie Sanchez. Groups, or we'll have um, uh, groups of, of, of people in or individuals in uh, that we want to thank. And, um, and in talking with uh, Commissioner Hutchins on the way back from Raleigh um, a week or so ago, uh, we were talking about um, Cleveland County, uh, Oklahoma, and the devastation that they've, uh, they've endured out there. And um, uh, we also were getting phone calls and text messages from people inside of our county that, that wanted to do so much to help them. Uh, help the people who are affected by that. Um, we reached out to, Cle uh, to Cleveland County, Oklahoma, um, and uh, uh, let them know our intentions. We would like to uh, start a dialogue with them. Uh, when everything slow down a little bit, we, we hope to have that dialogue and, and be able to talk with them a little bit. But uh, we felt it was appropriate um, to, one, to, um, to recognize the hearts and, and the, the, um, just the, the good people that we've got in Cleveland County that have done so much already for Cleveland County, Oklahoma, and the residents there. Uh, we've had um, people get in their cars and drive money and supplies there. Well, we've got uh, businesses setting up tractor trailers and accepting donations and taking things out to Cleveland County, Oklahoma. Um, lots of phone calls being made. We've got drop-off points all across our county, um, and it just shows the kind of people we have here. So uh, I'm proud to, proud to call Cleveland County home as well, so I know each of us uh, here are. Um, but we wanted to do something more official and uh, I talked with, uh, with Carrie and she's she's really good at working on resolutions so she's if you would mind reading up the resolution and discuss that. This is a resolution encouraging support for Cleveland County, Oklahoma. Whereas on May 20th, 2013, a massive tornado struck the town of Moore located in Cleveland County, Oklahoma. And whereas Cleveland County, North Carolina, and Cleveland County, Oklahoma share the same name. 
And whereas, whenever our nation has faced disaster such as this, Americans must join together to help the affected areas recover and rebuild. And whereas, shortly after the tornado ripped through this community, residents, res, ugh, excuse me, residents of Cleveland County were called to action and answered to aid the tornado victims. And whereas, donation stations were established throughout the county which collected tractor trailers full of items as well as thousands of dollars which were and are continuing to be delivered to Oklahoma. And whereas it takes only a short time for a tornado to cause so much devastation, but it takes years to rebuild a community affected by such tragedy. Now, therefore, the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners wishes to thank our residents for their generosity toward the people affected by the tornado in Oklahoma. And as leaders, we will work towards fostering a relationship with this community who shares the same name. Adopted this the fourth day of June, 2013. Commissioners, I'd like you to, to uh, consider adopting this resolution. Is that form of a motion? Uh, it is. I have a motion uh, to adopt the resolution to uh, recognize the support and our support for the Cleveland County for uh, Oklahoma. Four counties on the state. More, more, I'm sorry, more, uh, more the city. So I have a motion from the vice chair. Make a motion to adopt the resolution. I have a second. Over. Uh, any comments about the group that took uh, the items out to support the people of Oklahoma, or any comments about the resolution at this time? Let's commend the people from our county that did step up and fight the gun to Oklahoma. There's quite a few that did, and um, immediately set up drop off points um, and jump in cars and vehicles and went in. I certainly appreciate the fact that they did that. And those that stayed behind but still make contributions. Just, just a comment. I think that uh, Mr. Paul and Mr. are talking and he does commissioners and as we look at down the road, right now everybody's pouring out help, but you know several months down the road they're still going to need some help. I think that's what this resolution is going to do is uh, connect us to their county. I know uh, Mr. Paul has already said he's talking with Mr. Butler already or tried to make contact with him to, to let him know that, that we're here and if things comes up that we can help him with maybe several months down the road then we're going to be here to do it. So I think it's a pretty good gesture. Uh, I think uh, one further thing I would like to say is it's, it's hard for me to imagine the devastation that these people um, have went through. And, you know, I wasn't as much impressed, I don't think, uh, uh, but just last week, um, they had those from come through the same area. Uh, just, I mean, through part of the same area that was hit. And um, I just happened to have uh, run into a couple, their son and daughter-in-law was out there. And uh, they actually saw a, um, what they told me was a baby being ripped out of the parents' arms and was called by another person um, before it, it could be injured. But it, during this storm, it was it's just uh, unbelievable what this people went through. So the, the biggest thing I think we can do for them is pray for them.
Disease. Y'all make sure y'all write that down and tell it. Uh, they go low delta, which is going to take it real quick. Uh, I think that the only ones going is John and I. I'll make a motion that I'm sure to be able to go to <laughs> okay, got a motion for Mr. Hutchins. I'll second. I second five chair. All in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Now, not being me, I can speak on Tim a little bit. Uh, we have a resolution on the public service of uh, Representative Tim Moore. Those of you who know him know that he has served in the House for a number of years. He has advanced himself now to be probably the third most powerful person in the House of the General Assembly. Um, I'm assuming, and I'm just going to, this is an assumption on my part, that since uh, the uh, Speaker is going to run for the uh, Senate, that Mr. Moore may have a good chance to be the Speaker of the House. So it would be an honor for us to be the candidate to do that and so I ask you to consider this resolution and I will ask Carrie, our clerk, to read that resolution. The purpose of the resolution is actually a request from um, Representative Hastings to name a portion of um, Interstate 85 in honor of Tim Moore. So that's what the end will, will say. But this is a resolution honoring the public service of Tim Moore, a North Carolina House Representative. Whereas Tim Moore, a native of Cleveland County, is currently serving his sixth term in the North Carolina General Assembly. And whereas Representative Moore left Cleveland County to receive his undergraduate degree and his JD, however, following law school, Moore returned home to Cleveland County to practice, practice law. And whereas Tim Moore's concern for children led to his being the primary sponsor of the Jessica Lunsford Act, House Bill 933, a law which provides that certain criminal offenses of rape or sexual offense against a child are either life imprisonment or mandatory active sentence of 25 years in lifetime satellite-based monitoring. And whereas in 2011, Tim Moore sponsored House Bill 49, which increases penalties for repeat DWI offenders. Laura's law was named for a Gaston County teen who was killed in an automobile accident. And whereas, Tim Moore takes a personal interest in his constituents by making himself available to elected officials in his district as well as citizens in need. And whereas Representative Moore, through hard work, has worked his way through the ranks of the North Carolina House, presently serving as the chairman of the House Rules Committee, the third highest ranking member in the House leadership. And whereas the vast array of civic groups that Representative Moore is involved in shows how he gives unselfishly his time and talent to benefit his constituents. Now, therefore, the commissioners of Cleveland County wish to express their appreciation for the public service given and contributions made by Tim Moore by naming the portion of I-85 from just inside the Cleveland County line to just inside the North Carolina border close to South Carolina, the representative Tim Moore Highway. Adopted this the fourth day of June, 2013. Resolution at this time we have comments about the uh, resolution form. I guess the resolution is probably well we see on has been done by the part of somewhere he can only get involved in special money. We need an extra money. He has went to the speaker of the house and he's got money to road improvement and turn lanes and so forth. And Tim has been a great help in our county. I don't think I've ever called him uh, get a call back that day. He has an outstanding worker for our county. I'd just like to say a second to what Mr. Hutchinson said and his response to county needs, I think, paramount in his native business. And uh, from our behalf, uh, the economic development of the project that we've been involved in, as the commissioner said, uh, it's, it's great to have an ally sitting in the position that he sits that is as responsive as he is. So, uh, from my perspective, it is a tribute to him, well justified to make that out of him. All I know is I can sit down with him. He and Amber would be more than going all the way through. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it's an honor to be able to uh, help uh, promote this uh, 
part of the highway for Representative Boyd. And at this time, I entertain a motion to approve the resolution. I'll make it. I'll make a motion to approve it. Vice Chair, I'll second. Commissioner Hutchins, all in favor, please raise your hand. Thanks to you. Let's see. What kind of parking presentation is real car? Is it a tiger or a tigger? Tiger is an acronym, of course, you know, from the federal government, but uh, basically it's a discretionary grant uh, that the U.S. Department of Transportation will award to the state. Uh, so our local division is applying for some money to uh, go toward the construction of our bypass. Um, projects have to be shovel ready. R2707 um, is considered a shovel ready, ready project. It's already received state and federal permits, and it's also got the, uh, the National Environmental Policy Act approval. Uh, construction is underway on the first phase, so this money will hopefully can go toward the second phase of the project. Um, we also had to include in there some of the economic benefits. Uh, we'll remove over 2,000 trucks per day from a congested commercial corridor. The governor and the legislature have proposed changing the state's project ranking funding formulas to better link economic development with transportation projects through a data-driven process. That's a new uh, ranking process that all these projects will have to go through. Uh, bypass will create approximately 1,000 long-term jobs as a result of increased mobility and accessibility, making it the sixth most beneficial, beneficial project in the state. We've also gotten resolutions from the RPO and the Gaston NPO, and they will be transmitted to the DOT also. And the City of Shelby is also uh, approving the resolution, hopefully this week. Uh, Commissioner, would you like to part, read the resolution, or do you have that time to read it, or are there any questions of Mr. Clark? I have a question on it. This, this, Will this be new money for the project yes. to do additional things on the project? Yeah, just new money to go to place already. So it will replace what so the state would put in? Yes. So it will speed up the project. And we hope it will be $10 million. Mm -hmm. If it's your pleasure to read the resolution, Mr. Mm Hannes, -hmm. I just have to clerk put in there. I think it's probably put in there. Here it is. Mm -hmm. And at this time, do I have a motion that we do not deny the resolution? I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Motion to adopt the resolution. Tiger uh, Grant resolution. I'll second that. Commissioner Allen, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. We're going to read the rest of that out. Thank you. Uh, our next agenda item is a uh, reevaluation discussion. Mr. you all know that uh, several years ago, we moved on the uh, normal four-year revaluation to what, 10, 2010, 2012, and that is in place right now, and that's the direction that we're working in. Uh, some further discussion uh, about uh, valuations and all uh, are before us now, and the act of either leave it as it is or change it to 2016 um, uh, is the forest and what we need to do is return it over to the county manager for his comments and we have a good week here to make his comments also. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, shortly after coming back on board as your um, interim county manager, I um, had a preliminary discussion with Chris Green, the tax administrator, and also with uh, other county officials and folks around the county and there were varying degrees of concern about the property revaluation that was scheduled for 2014 whether or not we had the uh, appropriate quantity and quality of housing sales across the county to be able to produce a quality property revaluation after sitting down on a couple of occasions with, with mr green uh, 
I had some, some pretty good concerns about the amount of data that we had and the quality of that data. And uh, basically, after discussing it with him, I felt it very appropriate that we come back before you tonight and, and give you uh, an opportunity to hear our concerns and uh, make your final decision as to whether or not we maintain the schedule that we have now for that property evaluation in 2014 or whether we delay it to 2016. I, it's, I think it's, it's my humble opinion after looking into the data and, and having some discussions with um, Chris and some other folks that uh, it, it might be in the county's best interest to delay that for another two years in hopes that the housing recovery continued to gain some steam and we had uh, a larger number of sales and uh, a larger number of what would be considered arm links, arms link transactions that um, did not in involve uh, some, some short sales and some other types of transactions that people were forced into making uh, uh, the transactions. But I think we need to hear from Chris and, and hear what he's got to say and then of course it's up to the board of commissioners. Again, we can continue along the path that we're on and do it in 2014 and do the very best job possible do have a severe concern about the number of, of good sales that we have out there to base that, that we've got on. I think it might be better to wait in hopes that we could produce a better product in 2016 than we can in 2014. There's no guarantees that the economy is going to get better or that the housing situation is going to continue to improve, but we certainly would hope that that's the case. Chairman, uh, I, <clears throat> I do agree with uh, Mr. Beer's comments. He has taken time to, uh, to talk with me, uh, and uh, give that some serious consideration. Uh, as you know, uh, the mass appraisal process is, is heavily dependent on uh, statistical analysis, and the application of that analysis to groups of properties. And of course the reliability of those results is influenced and impacted by the quantity and quality of sales data in those samples. What we're faced with uh, now and have been for some time is, is a pretty diminished uh, sample size of reliable sales data to work with. Uh, the total number of sales down significantly from the comparable time period leading up to the last evaluation. Uh, many of those sales, foreclosures, or short sales, or other uh, non arm length transactions that uh, we would, would typically be uh, excluded from their banks, uh, leaving us with fewer than half the number uh, that were available for review the last three that price at the same time period. Uh, as Mr. Pierce said, of course, there's no, there's no guarantee looking forward, uh, but there are some positive signs. Uh, in, in pushing back the effective date, uh, the, the expectation is, is that we can take advantage of increased activity, increased sales volume, and in particular, uh, greater stability and consistency uh, in the market, regardless of what sales uh, prices are, to be able to have enough stability and consistency to uh, accurately and reliably identify those trends. Uh, to put together a better, <coughs> more reliable product uh, that the board has to come with. Uh, and then in that light, I, I would support uh, the game manager's comments his, his uh, commissioners, you know that uh, <clears throat> normally we have the evaluation for four years, the fire is eight years, that we originally, uh, original evaluation was in 2012, uh, for the four year evaluation, that's when we really had the foreclosures and the short sales. Uh, 
Uh, we pushed it back because of that reason, 2014, which was six years. If we must call into 2016, there is no turning back. It will be done at that year, regardless of what harm it is. Uh, you've heard the recommendation from the town manager, you've heard the recommendation from the tax assessor. Uh, at this time, are there any questions of either? Discussion on the I guess in looking at the views, I think this is part of the reason that the first county had all the calls. I assume some of it because they didn't have a quality product when they made the judgment. And, uh, I have talked to several people on the community, you know, but the uh, paper put it off. You know, even some of the real people put it off because they understand. They just tell me on the market and not being able to get the quality product down. So, any other I have a couple of quick questions. Um, one is um, if the rear valve split off until 2016, would be using 20, would be using this year's data as part of that comparison or the data for the rear valve throughout 2013, 2014. Or would it be 2014, 2015? Uh, at this point, we would be largely using 11 to 12 and pushing, pushing forward. We would be able to, to use that as well as uh, data from uh, 13. So you don't just take two years, you take, you take more than two years data to come up with the value? How are sales compared this year right now versus last year? Volume um, wise, I think we've seen uh, a bit of an increase. Um, we've seen a trend down in foreclosures in the first quarter of 13 compared to the first quarter of 12. Uh, and of course, we've seen some, uh, some growth in, in housing stocks compared to some of those positive signs. One more question for Chris. I know this is a lengthy process. How many, how many man hours or how much time has been spent on the rear valve for, for the rear valve that would be in fact the next year? Well, uh, <coughs> there has been a good, good, good time spent. Uh, but I would say that uh, not all of that is, is wasted. Much of that, uh, much of that work uh, in regards to Property inspection, property characteristics is certainly something that we can use here too. Thanks. <coughs> I just say that I talked to the real estate broker today. And it's, I've been on both sides. Uh, some are seeing good sales, some are in top end sales, but uh, a lot of them are not seeing any change. But the biggest thing that I'm hearing. Consequence to sales would be based on the unemployment rate. People show unemployed and not back. But I still believe that uh, 2013 probably is going to be a better valuation year than what was going back in 2011. 2011, what, what you're going based on? 11 12 or not? 11 12. That was the year that we had so many foreclosures and short sales. So uh, hopefully, even though Tax rate was, I'm sorry, the uh, unemployment rate was a lot higher than also. So it is on the downward trend flow. And unfortunately, it, I appreciate all those of you on BBC. Uh, they've got a lot of jobs created. The thing about it is they've turned around a lot of jobs and jobs too. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be much change in housing sales until the banks release the money, and then I'll release the money until the unemployment rate. Best thing that we have right now, the worst thing we have right now is no good evaluation years. So um, I'm, I think that I'm on the side of the county manager and the uh, county tax assessor that we probably need uh, 2013 as a better evaluation year. No thing to do this year is uh, on. But uh, that's just my comments. Mr. Chairman, I just follow up on the comments. Uh, I guess the 
very complicated issue. It's an issue um, I get. I guess most officers probably struggle with it, in which direction to go. But uh, just to mention a couple bullet points, I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Deer and Chris and their evaluation of things. Uh, also, if you put those two together and then you listen to some realtors and uh, if you study the national trend and you look at the slight downturn in unemployment, which is ticking downward, of course, not like we'd like to see it, but it is ticking downward. Um, plus a couple of projects we're working on that could be significant impactors on unemployment. Uh, I think I'm prone to agree with Mr. Deer, Mr. Green, and some of you other commissioners that I would, I would, I believe, make a post on one also. I think that uh, I, I respect the, and appreciate the efforts and time that you guys put into looking into this for us to help us make the decision because it has been a tough one. We've all talked about it and discussed it. And, you know, if we make the decision to put it off, I think we need to be very mindful of it in the next period of time as we're making decisions of what we're going to do because we still don't know what it's going to look like for us when we do get to that final hour that we need to, to do the evaluation that that eight year is there. So we've always got to keep that in our thoughts when we're making decisions that there could be an impact on us with the, with the other Any other questions, comments, uh, Mr. Deer? I guess, I guess what's not good is looking at our economic laws, right? For some of the incentives we give, if we give back money when they pay their taxes, will we be in a association a couple of years down the road? Have we got some companies that we will start gaining full incentives from that can make they also a difference if the property value goes down. There's some down to five to the five. Yeah. We'll, we'll pay we'll pay yeah. yeah. So that could offset some of it, even if we have a bad year of evaluation, can offset probably quite a bit of any funding that hit that period of time. Certainly will help. Okay. Uh, the entire recommendations of the tax assessor and the county manager for the comments of the commissioner. Uh, in advance of this, just in case there was a motion that this be changed, uh, uh, our town clerk has prepared a resolution. So, before any resolution or anything is being dated, I would like to know if there's a motion to change the rebound from 2014 to 2016. Mr. Chair, I'll thank you uh, for. And like I said, I'd like that motion. I motion Mr. Holbrook to change the revaluation, uh, to change the valuation from 2014, which is currently scheduled for 2016. I have a second. I'll second. I have a second from the vice chair. Any other discussion about changing the revaluation from 2014 to 2016? Hearing none. All in favor? All in favor of a resolution, and we will read that resolution in just a moment. All in favor of a resolution to change the rebound 2016, please raise your right hand. Other questions? Resolution, well, you got it in 2016. So, uh, thank you, Madam Clerk, for having this ready. Uh, if you'll bear with me just a minute, we'll get the glasses off. <coughs> Resolution change in schedule for reappraisal. Where is North County General Statute 105 286 requires that all real, real property be appraised, be appraised at least every eight years? And where is the same statute permits any county desire to accept a reappraisal early to do so upon adoption of a resolution so providing? And where is a reappraisal of real property the Cleveland County is currently scheduled to take effect to January 1, 2014? And where due to economic conditions, the number of real property transactions available for analysis has been greatly reduced, and where the board of commissioners made by resolution modify the date for which the next county wide 
the evaluation will take place is where it's based on the foregoing the Warren Commission drives change the fixed date of the county review that plays in January 1st, 2016. Now that it's worth Warren Commission to leave the county. The other is resolved as follows. That the next January is afraid that Will Hodge within the county of Cleveland shall be scheduled to become effective January 1st, 2016, under the provision of North County Health Statute 105 286. Success of the general career base will be performed on a four year cycle unless market sales, cost, economic data analysis indicate a different schedule is necessary to improve a resolution by the Board of Commissioners or if a more advanced schedule is required by the North Carolina General Statute. And you could have just adopted that resolution. Any questions about this? I'll put the cart before the horse. I'll try to get the discussion out before we add it. Again, thank you for having something for me to read in case that motion carried. Um, and commissioners, uh, that was the last of our agenda items, but there is a comment that needs to be made uh, before we go into closed session. And I'm going to put the uh, cabinet manager on the spot on this. But uh, the commissioners, you have received copies of the budget. The budget is available to the public. Um, where do we have budgets available at? In our office, um, I think the Shelby Library and maybe the Lawrenceville Library. Okay. Maybe one there. There may be one there. I know we have one in our office, and, and Chris is here tonight, but I will make sure there's one. We don't have one there. Yeah. I think there may be, but I'm positive. Just a brief comment about the budget is uh, it is a uh, um, Balanced budget. And I did, uh, Mr. Deere has put together a budget that has a 2% cost of living increase for employees. Uh, there is a fee schedule on there for the Enterprise Fund at Banfield, which is a dollar increase on home garbage pickup, which is a dollar per month, bringing from $50 to $62, and then $4.72 kitten fee will be applied it's in the budget. Neither one of those affect the budget, so it's fluid that can be taken out and not affect the budget at all. Am I not correct on that? That is correct. There's also an increase in uh, uh, the tax rate for the fire district in there, and again, it has no effect on the budget at all. On the general fund budget. On the general fund budget. Uh, but uh, other than those items, it is a balanced budget. It is available for the public's uh, view. Will be available at Lawville, Library, Shelby. And it may be King's Mount, but I'll double check that tomorrow in here in our office. And that if anyone needs to see a copy of that budget, it's available at Chris. I know y'all won't get a copy of it. Uh, make sure uh, Mr. Paul has got his copy right here. Uh, I'd like to take it line item by line item and look at it in place. Uh, it's, it's a lot in there and it's a lot to understand. But I want to make that comment before we close the session. Oh, yeah. Uh, public hearing will be on June 18th, uh, and that's where we'll vote on the budget. And I'd say it's fluid, it can change, and uh, in comments to commissioners about the budget. I, I do, since you opened the door to the shipping fees of landfill. These, these, some of these increases in the shipping fees of landfill are due to capping in landfill all the requirements. For example, it takes $20 million. To cap the landfill. Okay, this was suggested by certain parties that evaluate landfill to put this in effect a couple years ago. But the economy now we chose not to. But it's something if we don't get started, we're going to be way behind. For example, like he said, the trash pickup has been the same price it has for the last 20 years. And, you know, fuel cost, different things are going up so that. The landfill itself has been subsidized in the household garbage. It's come to the point that hey, we, we're going to have to take care of the landfill now. At some point in time, they're going to have to raise property taxes. So, and, and the deal was is why not the user, and it's a basically a user fee that will be increased for the people using the landfill will pay for it so we can start generating the fund to close it up. Another thing as far as the fire department, 
it increases that because starting last year we had to pull money from the general fund to support that organization because there wasn't enough money there for it. So that's something that, uh, you know, a penny on the hundred to make sure that you got the farm in there. That's, that's another, I feel like it's something that, you know, we, we've got to do as a fee for those people to make sure because if you look at all the volunteers that the fire department has, there's no way we could afford to have it. We had to put the tax out there to hire people to do the job. So that's that's a very cheap service that uh, we're paying for just a couple of extra pennies, you know. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Again, um, the uh, budget is out there for public review. Uh, it is not uh, uh, voted on yet. Everybody knows that. Uh, and um, if you have questions, please call us. It's available to the public in several locations. One of, I'm sorry. Um, the, act, the budget message and the ordinance, which are mainly the, the meat of the budget, has already been posted on our website. So um, if you can go there and actually see the majority of what um, what the budget is all about, rather than the line by line items. So you may want to check on our website. Vote on the budget, and uh, the chairman's always got a good clerk and a good lawyer to help. I don't know about that man. <laughs> He's just temporary. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we need to have a closed session for just a few minutes, and uh, uh, Ahmed gave me the, uh, the motion is that the motion will be to go to closed session of General Statute 143. That is 318.11A3 to discuss the legal matter with the county attorney. At this time, I have a motion. I got a motion. I need a second. Second. Got a second. Discussion on the table. Thank you. And we'll be back on the chair. session. 
with our representative on several issues on rural lands to what affects us in the county. So that, that was possible. Also, I'd like to commend Commissioner Falls on the veteran, Cleveland County Veterans Council. They, they do a good job with Veterans Day throughout the whole county. Okay, FAIR, that was FAIR Association. You know that the health department had their news release yesterday with the causes of the E. Uh, e. coli, I mean, like that, man, and their recommendations. And there was only recommendations. They found no negligence on the part of the fair. They found out that uh, the fair had gone over and above the regulations set in the state. And what they said they're going to see if they can project some more. They said that there's no way of knowing if you're going to prevent it 100%, but they're going to try to do everything they can. But the main focus is going to be on parents take the kids to the fair. You've got to wash your hands. The hand washing stations they had the last time, they're going to put more of them in. They're going to put four or six signs that were were. They're going to light some of them up. The batteries. Don't read the recommendation in the papers so enough. There's no need to go into it. But they said on the training zoo, with the recommendation coming out, don't know if they can get a petting zoo that will abide by all the recommendations to be able to get you for the fair. Because in fact, you already get a contract for most of the vendors coming to the fair right now. So that's going to be a question. Okay, the RPO MPO, we met at a vote on forming the three county MPO, and it was a high vote. Or not. Uh, Bill Cartman called another meeting on the 19th to accept. I think there's a benefit for us being there. I passed out the MO, 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 whatever it is. We went back and the RPO has recommended changing the voting system as far as uh, what it takes to change the rules, what it takes to set project so we, we've already asked to change some of that so we don't know how it's going to stand okay we had an advisory council meeting in king's mouth today basically seems like everything on that end is, is going pretty good they're working on a budget i think we're going to have some utility increases but no tax increase and other than that um Mr. Hutchins, I did uh, go up to the Rock for the day. I think it was a, a very beneficial trip for um, for uh, Cleveland County. Not only we talked to a lot of our representatives, but also a lot of our neighboring um, counties and neighboring representatives uh, to build a, a strong relationship with them. And, um, I think we've got a, we've got a strong uh, strong uh, rapport with uh, the, a lot of the legislators up there now. Uh, but it was a good time for us to talk to them, especially about the budget and making sure they don't pass down any, uh, any other things to us, surprises us, yeah, money mandates. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 North Shelby uh, had their graduation. I know graduation's going on um, uh, over the next uh, couple of days, but uh, North Shelby had their graduation. Uh, it was great to see that event, see, uh, see all the people out there. It was a, it was a packed house um, and very, very moving man. Uh, Keith Mount State Community Breakfast. I'm sure you did a good job for being so early in the morning. I did. I did. <laughs> and, and, and you were awake, so that was great. That was good. Very good information at that event. Um, and uh, that's all of it. I was going to ask Mary Murphy, but I have a little talk back to the last person. We got a detailed description. Detail yeah, I'm yeah. sure did. <laughs>
been a motion. I'll second. Mr. Allen. Second. All in favor of adjourning, please raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you.